R has some graphics capabilities in built into it by default. So when you install R, very powerful graphing capabilities are installed along with R. And that is what we call as base graphics. Now over time, what has happened is that other packages for graphics have become more popular than base graphics. Base graphics is very powerful, but the syntax of base graphics has grown over, evolved over time and uh, doing certain things with base graphics becomes a little difficult. Okay, but nevertheless, base graphics is very useful when you want to do some quick plotting. So what we'll do in this particular lesson is to take a look at some base graphics capabilities that you would like to use. But for our more sophisticated exploratory analysis, most of the time we'll be using a different graphics package called ggplot. Okay, so I just want to cover a little bit of base graphics in this one lesson. For the rest of the course, we'll be dealing only with ggplot. So, for example, one of the things that you will always do when you're dealing with uh, a numeric variable is to understand how this variable is distributed, especially when you're trying to visualize a numeric variable. You will want to see how it's distributed. So one of the best ways of looking at the distribution of numeric variables is to create a histogram. So you can use the command hist and hist is the base graphics function to create a histogram. So you do hist and then you give the vector that you want to draw a histogram for. In this case, I'm saying auto dollar acceleration or there is a column called acceleration in the auto uh, data frame that we created in the earlier lesson. And you just give the name of that vector and it's going to plot for you a histogram. Or of course, you can get the get at the same vector by spell, er, er, getting the column by its column number and uh, acceleration happens to be the seventh column so we can also do this okay alternately if you want to avoid prefixing auto you can say attach auto so attach is a function which essentially tells r when i refer to a variable if that variable does not exist by itself look for it in this particular data frame okay so i can just say once i have attached that particular data frame i can then simply say hist acceleration okay now by itself there is no variable called acceleration right we have not created a variable called acceleration but i'm still able to say hist acceleration because I have attached the auto data frame. So R is first going to look for a variable called acceleration. It is not going to find it. It is then going to go and look into the data frame auto for a column whose name is acceleration. It's going to find it and it's going to plot it. Okay, so that is how the attach function works. And the result is going to be a histogram. Notice that I didn't have to tell R how many bars to create, how to bin the values, nothing. R just uses sensible defaults and it produces a decent output. Of course, you have control over uh, you know, all of those things as well. You have complete control over what all you can do and we'll see some of the options here. I'm not going to get into all the different options. You can always see help on, hist, on the hist function and you'll, you'll get all the details. Okay, so notice of course that the output that I have shown here is the output for the first command because you can see that on the x-axis it says auto dollar acceleration, right? That means it came from there. The output of this would simply have had acceleration on the x-axis. So now I can control some of the things. So here I'm saying hist auto dollar acceleration x lab equals acceleration. This is, what do you want the x-axis label to be? x lab equals, and of course R is case sensitive, so you have to spell x lab exactly as it is, in lower case. And main equals the empty string, open quote, close quote. That is because by default, it puts, uh, 
a title for the graph, like for example, you're seeing histogram of auto dollar acceleration. That's what it does by default. I'm telling it, you know, when somebody sees the graph, they know very well that it's a histogram. And by looking at the x-axis label, which says acceleration, they know that it's a histogram of acceleration. So there really is no need for me to put a title to the graph. Okay, so that I'm saying suppress the title and you get the result. X-axis just says acceleration and uh, the main title is empty. So there is no main title here. And of course, you already know that what the histogram does is it divides the data into bins of equal width and it counts how many elements fall within each of those bins, right? So the height of the bar tells you how many elements in the data set, how many elements in the data set fell between those particular values, okay? So if you look at this, for example, uh, so this is 10, this is 15, so that is 12, this is 14, this is 15, this is 16. So the height of this bar represents how many values of acceleration occurred between 14 and 16. Okay, there were roughly a little more than 120 different cars that had an acceleration of between 14 and 16. And similarly for the other bars, right? So it's very important for you to understand what is being represented by a histogram. The histogram is dividing the values into bins, equal width bins, and counting how many data items occur within each bin. Okay, unless you understand that, you won't be able to interpret a histogram very well. So here, I'm saying hist auto dollar mpg prob equals true. Notice that here the y-axis is not the frequency, instead it is the density, right? So it's basically converted uh, the number of items in each bin is converted into a proportion rather than a count. So here, what I'm trying to do is plot the histogram like before, but also plot what is called as a density plot. That is a continuous version of the histogram to give an idea of how many items are falling at each range, except that this is now a continuous line. Okay, that is what is created by this density plot. Okay, now the density plot has a lot of uh, uh, subtleties and you can control the density plot in many different ways. I'm not getting into it. The reason I'm showing you this particular plot is that there's a fundamental difference between the hist command. Okay, the hist command, what it does, and many other plotting commands like that we'll be seeing shortly, what they do is they create a completely new plot in the plotting area, right? So they create a new plot. That means whatever is there is wiped out and something new is created there. Now sometimes what we would like to do is to plot something and then on top of the plot we want to add some other things, okay? And one of the ways of adding something to an existing plot is the function lines. Okay, so when you're using the lines function, what you're doing is you're saying don't erase the existing plot, let it be, but whatever plot I'm putting inside the lines function, add it, overlay it on top of the existing plot. Okay, so density auto dollar mpg will give you the density plot by itself, but when I put it within lines, it is going to overlay the density plot on top of any other plot that you already have. Okay, so that is the purpose of my showing you this particular example, not really to explain to you the meaning of the density function in any great depth. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the idea of doing that. Uh, so now I'm showing you how you can control the color of the bars. So color, C-O-L equals blue, so I want blue bars. And I also want 15 breaks within the histogram. Okay, so there are 15 breaks here. So I got a little more control over how many bars are being shown. Earlier, I just took the default. I didn't try to control it. Here I'm showing you how you can control the number of bars. Now sometimes you may want to add 
a normal curve along with the histogram because after all the histogram is showing you the distribution of the values and sometimes we are interested in knowing if that distribution follows a normal curve a normal bell shaped curve because a normal distribution is a very important occurrence in nature so sometimes we may want to see does it look normal or not so it's a good idea sometimes to just overlay a histogram with a normal curve now of course r doesn't have any function for this but i have written a function and this is the name of the function okay and that function is available in this particular file which i will put post for you to download right so you use this file this has a function and if you use that function it will plot for you the histogram with uh, a normal curve overlaid on top the name of the function is this i have deliberately given it a long name so that it doesn't clash with any of the inbuilt r functions so it's called dar2ed.hist.width.normal auto dollar mpg deliberately uh, clued g function name just so that it doesn't collide with anything so if you do that then you'll see a histogram and you also see uh, the normal curve meaning if the data same data had been normally distributed within that particular range and standard deviation then it would have looked like this but in reality our data looks like this the peak is a little to the left of where it would have been had it been normally distributed okay now in order to do this uh, what you have to do is to read this file into r studio right so first of all download the file put it in your r default directory a uh, working directory and then load this file in the source pane and within the source pane you will see a button called source okay so if you click on that button what will happen is that r studio will execute the code in the file and that will make this function available right so if you don't do that this function is not going to be available okay so that's what i meant in by, by saying source in this function and then call this and this function you can also control the labels and all other things whatever you could control earlier you can control with this function as well okay this time i am using this for acceleration and you see that acceleration is more close to a normal distribution than was what we plotted earlier